Hey, welcome back, everybody. Welcome to The Anxious Truth. This is episode number 176. If you're watching on video, you got to see my de my uh, guest air guitaring his way through, <laughs> through the intro. Welcome back to the show. Today, we have a special guest in the studio. And by studio, I mean on Zoom all the way from the UK. My friend, frequent collaborator, respected expert, as usual, Joshua Fletcher is here. What up, Josh? Uh, what up, Drew? How you doing? It's so lovely to be back on here. I love your podcast. I love everything that you do. And I, our chats are always fun and productive. And uh, well, I, I, at least I think they are. The listeners might be like, what are these guys talking about again? No, they seem to get a lot out of it. Everybody seems to enjoy when we do this. So full disclosure on a technical level, we're trying video here because this is going to be a video podcast. So bear with me if things get a little bit wonky, but the content will be good as always. So we today we're going to talk about Josh just released a new course. So I want to talk about that course. Um, it is targeted at panic disorder and agoraphobia and other anxiety problems. As you guys are well aware, if you listen to this podcast, you know what we're talking about. I, I, I want to talk about the course itself specifically, of course, but I really want to talk about why, why that course has to be done. And, and some of the stuff, Ooh. yeah, some of the stuff that's out there that maybe might not be so helpful. So we're going to talk about Josh's course, and maybe we'll, we'll veer into a little bit of a spicy discussion, which Josh had no idea we were going to do. So <laughs> <laughs> let's see how many friends and enemies we can make today. Now, nah, I won't be that bad, really. But. So anyway, t tell us about the course. Uh, the course is called Stop Fearing Fear with Anxiety, Josh. And the impetus behind it was to obviously help people with anxiety, fear, sensations, that your bread and butter stuff, Drew, um, agoraphobia, things like that, and do it in a way that's step-by-step, -step, interactive, and you can go back to it using another medium, you know, uh, just adding a visual medium. Uh, we're in the age where there's a lot of courses, digital courses being released. Um, I wanted to release an accessible one that was affordable for people um, because as... Uh, as, as we know, there's, there's many people out there that hide information behind paywalls and get you to coerce you into, uh, you know, parting with money. So I, I put it at a really affordable rate for everyone. It's quite surprising. People are like, whoa, you're doing that for that? I was like, yeah, because I want people to hear it. That's, that's what we do. I, I, I spend time trying to educate people, people with people like you. Kim Quinlan, Dean from DLC, uh, uh, and many of the mental health community, I want to just put another modicum of information out there for people, uh, particularly for those who fear fear. And I'm very happy with the outcome. Yeah, yeah. It's a good title, fear, Fearing Fear, because in the end, that is what this is kind of all about, being afraid of being afraid. Yeah, definitely. I mean, how many times did you th think, Drew, in your recovery or when, or when you were suffering, um, I personally thought it was like, oh, I've got to do exposures in the in the in the supermarket, and now I've got to do exposures in the car, and then at the seeing my family. It's like, well, no, actually, you're doing the exposure to one thing, and that's your fear of fear. Yeah, they're just plot devices in that, uh, and that's why it's really important. Yeah, you know, this is good, and people need to hear that. And it is a, a point of, I think, very large scale confusion. So one of the more popular episodes I did on this particular show was called All Your Fears Are One Fear, which I don't know, go back and search. I don't know which one it was. It was probably a year ago now. And everybody, it was a light bulb moment for so many people that heard that, like, oh, no, you're right, it is. Uh, but that's good news, right? Because you don't have to learn how to do every task in life again, which some people think you do. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And, and you can, this is why it's nice to set goals. And I know you're very... Um, adamant about this there's there's no goal that's too small because if you're going towards what your actual fear is it doesn't matter what's happening on externally so some people might be afraid of having panic attacks on on a, on public transport or on a train or, or a bus whereas some people may feel like they're behind because they can't leave their own house but actually both exposures are the same and i agree with you yeah it's one fear you're just fearing fear and so what i've done and particularly in the course and stuff is just to encourage that you're all exposing yourself to the same thing it doesn't matter don't compare don't be like oh well you know there's some people i know in in drew's group or there's some people i know that are in the same boat as me or, uh that can you know they, they can leave they can go, go on holiday and, and do things like that and i can't do that 
but they still struggle with, with their own fears. So it's really important to realize is that no, and what I encourage on the course is that you celebrate each win. And we do that. There's already celebrates. I took that from you. Like I, I should spend more time celebrating the wins of, of the people that, that listen to us. And, and, and to be honest, it's, it, it's the reason kind of why I started off doing this. I'm going to try not to forget doing it. I love it. It's wonderful. <laughs> my favorite accounts to follow on social media really, are, I mean, you know, clearly follow people like you and all my friends that I collaborate with, but the people who are actually using the stuff that we talk about, I love those accounts. Mm. Those are my favorite accounts. And every once in a while, it's always nice to give them a little shout out and some love. I, I dig yeah, it. I'm definitely going to do that. Home. Yeah. I'm definitely going to do that more. I think, and yeah, you, you inspired me to do that um because it does it, it gives you like a warm feeling inside but also you you know what it's like we know what it's like don't we to to to, to be there and be like everything in my mind and body is telling me i shouldn't do this everything in my mind and body is saying avoid just in case the magic word just in case just in case just in case just in case something bad happens that catastrophic what if happens that sensation becomes too overwhelming for you to handle um and when you cling on to the words of kind of what we say and other people say, like, no, go towards the uncertainty. You're practicing being anxious. You're practicing, go, go towards it. And when someone does that willingly, you know, or like you say, surrender, I call it willful tolerance, you know, it's kind of when they do it and then they suddenly start to see their anxiety dissipate. That is a wonderful feeling. <laughs> yeah, it's a superhero feeling. And I always found it, uh, and I know you can relate to this. It's, you know, that that moment where, well, I drove, I, I actually made the right turn onto Route 347, and I drove for 60 seconds, and I came back home. And that's such a huge win. And, you know, you could tell your family and your friends, but if they don't understand, they don't really understand. So it's really nice to have somebody who does understand say, oh, no, no, I know what a huge win that is, because I, I get that. So that's, that's so important. And I mean, one of the modules in stop fear and fear is compassion. And also one of the rules, like when you, when you enroll in your class, you get, you encourage each other and stuff like that. But compassion is one of the modules in the sense that there's, I know so many people that see exposure as robotic. So they believe in the formula of exposure, which is if I put myself in a scary position, I will then overcome anxiety. And that's where people get stuck. Well, I've, been, I've been doing my exposures all week and uh, nothing's working. Yeah, because these people tend to go, they're brave enough to go set, set off and they're courageous enough to put themselves in a scary situation. But then what happens is that they're then disappointed that they didn't meet their own expectations for recovery or success and therefore walk home with their head slumped slumped disappointed in themselves um and they start to be self-critical whereas compassion is the ultimate ingredient it's yeah. like if you can get on board with how fun it is so someone actually said this morning i was going to share it with you drew um, someone said this morning and i know you'll relate to this because i can oh my god like since i started encouraging myself and i'm getting encouragement from people and i've been compassionate i actually look forward to doing my exposure and I was like, boom, that's, that's it. it. That's, that's the hill. Once you're yeah. over that hill, see you later. <laughs> that's how you know that that shift yeah. has sort of happened. And I hear people talk about that all the time. Like, oh, I'm almost, I think I might be a little bit addicted to my exposures. And like, okay, we have to be careful about exposures becoming <laughs> impulsive. But that's a great thing to do, right? When you get to that point where it's like, oh, no, I really, I relish these experiences because I know they're making me better. It's That's when the expectations begin to align with what the goals really are and it's interesting because I would give full credit to our friend Kimberly for teaching me what compassion really meant. Um, when I wrote The Anxious Truth and I said this to her, or when I wrote an anxiety story, which was my own story, I literally wrote like there was, I, there was no self-compassion. And in retrospect, though, I wish I could erase that from the thousands of copies that are out there because I, I, I just meant that I wasn't going to let myself off the hook. But I've learned since that, yeah, celebrating your victories really helps put your expectations in alignment with where they should be for how this process goes. It's, it's also like it's an indication of where your self esteem is at as well. Um, it's if you, the post analysis of your recovery or your exposures or, or whatever it is you're doing, it's how, how you speak to yourself after it is so important to build to the next step. 
I mean, the first three modules in Stop Fearing Fear is about reframing the words to a more compassionate way. And I, and I keep telling people, no, this is the problem. You know, I have an overly sensitized nervous system and I am afraid of these adrenaline rushes rather than I can't control my panic attacks. So they mean the same thing, but it's so encouraging to, it's so powerful, the semantics and, and, and the words on, that you use to describe what's going on, you know, to the point where even when I did it and I described my own panic disorder uh, here is when I said, life got too stressful for me. And my brain decided, the old anxious part of my brain got confused and started to become overprotective of me. I need to now work hard and compassionately to turn that part of my brain off. This isn't my fault. It's just responding to what, how I was dealing with life at the time. Yeah. Whereas, oh my God, I'm a worrier. I'm overthinker. This and that. Like, that ain't gonna help. <laughs> no, it, it's not, and it's not being very nice to yourself. That's true. Mm. Yeah. So I do like that stuff, you know, uh, and, and that's what is unique about the course as well, because there's some other courses out there by people who don't really understand compassion. <laughs> well, I think, you know, this is good. And we get into this a little bit. So why did, why is the course needed? And by the way, let me just echo that whole, when I wrote the anxious truth, I wrote that this is really a reactions problem more than anything else. Right. So change your reaction before, during, and after, and after is the story that you tell after the experience. So yes. if you're going to run back into your Facebook group or your home or your friends and say, that was terrible. I panicked. I thought I was going to pass out. I almost passed out. I almost died. My heart was racing. That's, that's not a, you know, you're not really being very kind to yourself because you're basically saying that the way you felt is a failure. Whereas for me, a huge shift became, I can acknowledge that I felt all those things, but really the story ended with, well, I just really did a hard thing to help retrain my brain. And I, and I did it. Look, I did it. And, and I can do it again tomorrow. And that became really the story after the exposure and it had to end there and things began to really snowball and change and for the better for me when I did that. Perfect. You're right. I like that before, during and after. It's the after where people can, can, can slip. That's where the lesson is. Yeah. Because, and also where the brain, what the brain remembers before it sleeps. Yeah. You know, so it will remember that exposure for the day. I mean, I can see those guitars, but, but, um, behind you drew i mean i don't think i'm ready enough to endure that exposure of you no. playing it yet no. but there's not but how many times it, <laughs> how many times do you try to play a song and you hit a wall or whatever and then you go to sleep on it and you're like oh it's all right i've done enough today i'll practice it some more tomorrow <laughs> and you pick the guitar up two days later and you're suddenly playing better Absolutely. you know it's like how am i how am i doing this i've not even played it it's because you went to bed and the brain started to piece together actually that's some good practice for today well done etc yeah. but after if you've got anxiety and then you're, you're constantly comparing yourself after the explosion well yeah i went to the park and i was brave but three years ago i could fly around the world was so sort of pathetic i'm like well you're gonna you know that you're gonna stay in that area it, it almost like panic disorder for me and agoraphobia forced me to discover an element of self-compassion in me that was always there but I pushed down and particularly as well as a guy it's not necessarily gendered but as a guy I think the more sensitive language is more socially taboo and I was like no once I realized how powerful it was I'm like no we've got to this is really important and, and everyone deserves it yeah I always say you know they, it's how we speak to our anxiety is one thing how we speak about it is also very important because in the end the person who hears it most of anyone else is is us when we speak we hear our own words so those are important yeah. let's talk about you know i said that's one of the important parts of the course which i dig you know helping people with that because i mean look i'll just go out and say it anybody can read a claire weeks book and 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 create you know four hours of video and charge money for it so and they're out there i get that but the practical application of those concepts starts to get a little bit tricky where you really have to pay attention to the individual nuances and you have to really understand what people are going through and and address those things and so what made you include that module because anybody could teach what exposure is that's that's not a mystery but what do you think is the differentiating factor for you the differentiate the differentiating factor with what i've done with start fearing fear is throughout it all there's no failure i think a lot of these courses particularly constructed by people that go in with it with the wrong intentions 
um they will it's usually people just hungry greedy people who want loads of money you know I, I, some of these people charge three grand for these courses i'm like you're that. not even trained man like like <laughs> wake up but anyway the the biggest danger i find about those courses is that there's this dichotomy of success that's created where if you're not getting better it's because you're not following my advice properly and i find that quite dangerous so what i do in mine is like no actually if if you're not getting better i want to know what i didn't include Mm. i want you to let me know i want you to know that every improvement is success it's if you're not getting better it's not something it's not down to something that you've not done it's down to something that i've not taught properly yeah and that's the difference you know and i do you know i do a weekly q a with, with, with the people in the course just to answer those questions um thankfully i didn't miss out anything massive uh, but, but, you know, yeah but those but, um, will inform revisions and down the road yeah definitely yeah. and it's a bit like your your group drew it's those which I love. It's that whole kind of, it's just those reminders of where you can be at, but, but kind reminders where we're all like, you know, we don't need to go down this, this route anymore. This is the way, this is the way out. And let's all celebrate and encourage each other on the yeah. way out. And, and that's, and that's really nice. I, and that's the difference. And that's why I put it at such a low price, like a low price point for a course as well, because I want everyone to, to, to have a go at it and give me feedback if you need to, you know, like even if it's change your haircut or get a wash or whatever. <laughs> Please don't, and nobody comment on Josh's hair. It's a sensitive moment. I'll, I'll, I'll go to bed. The sensitive. That's thing. module twelve. That's module guess. twelve. Josh's hair. Um, <laughs> I even like the way you named the course because "Stop Fearing Fear" is a very specific and not grandiose thing. Because I think a lot of the courses that we see out there, they immediately go. If I see another course where the cover image of the course is a person on the top of a mountain in the victory pose, I'm going to lose my shit because, <laughs> like, that, that's great, but that's such a tough bird, and that's a that's a hard thing to hand somebody who's taking a course like this. Like, if you do this right, you'll be that person on the mountain with your arms in the air at the sunrise. And like, while that's an inspire might be an inspiring image, you really broke it down to the smallest. Like, hey, this is really what this is. And you know what? If you wind up on the top of a mountain great. But if you wind up just being able to drop your children off at school, then that's also a huge win. So bringing it right down to the nitty gritty of just stop fearing your fear. This is what we're going to learn how to do here. The, you know, the, the mountain genuine, top yeah. and the jet jetting around the, the world that comes later, maybe if it does. Bonus. I, I can hand on heart. And I know that you're with me on this. I hand on heart. I'm no more impressed with someone who can climb a mountain and that than some who someone's aim was to go and visit their their mom in another state yeah like that that i am more if i get more not even more joy i get the same joy from people walking to the end of their street or around the block that terrified them as someone who managed to talk in front of thousands for a work meeting right. i don't get me wrong I t- it's the same joy it's like wow did that scare you and you did it wow that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I, I genuinely, I'm not, I'm not just, I'm not just saying that it's, I think it's, it's really, really um, satisfying. You must hear that in your group of stuff as well, um, Drew. Oh, all the time. Um, yeah. yeah. I, um, I, I was going to ask, <laughs> what would your image be? What would your, like, like for me, when I was in the midst of panic, what was yeah. that the image of the equivalent of, of me being on top of a mountain with panic disorder would be in, asda which is uh walmart <laughs> and i'd be shaking in the frozen poultry aisle going that's my image on top of the mountain because that's the scariest thing i did in my recovery what would your image be that's fair i think mine i might have had two one and we'll go back to the hair thing because look it matters to both of us neither of us is going to win any awards for our hair so for me it was probably two images the cover image of my course would have probably been just sitting there eyes forward getting my hair cut without like literally losing my shit you know um that would be a huge yeah. win that was a hard 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 thing to do and probably pictures from back then would prove that and the other one would be just sitting on my sofa as crazy as it sounds i aspire to be able to sit on my sofa in the house alone so i know for a lot of people listening to us sitting on the sofa is a problem because they're agoraphobic and severely restricted by their panic attacks but all i wanted to do is be able to be home alone for a half hour and not be terrified 
So those aren't very inspiring images. Some dude sitting alone at his house and some guys, you know, sitting there getting his hair cut, but they matter. They really matter to me, just like your tiny goals, being able to go to your cousin's wedding, you know, two towns away and stay there for three hours. That's a huge deal. That is worthy Massive. of tremendous celebration when you get to that point. So we should do that. Massive. Yeah. Uh, there was a huge one the other day. People, I managed to get public transport for the first time in 20 years. I'm like, that's great. Uh, you know, uh, and and that they credited you and our recovery rooms and everything like that. And just basically it's our message in different modicums, isn't it? And, yeah, sure. uh, and I think when she was doing the course, she thought, you know what, I'm going to take everything I've learned from all you guys and I'm, I'm going to go and do it. Um, and yeah, everyone's celebrating. I think she was a bit nervous to be like, oh, I got on the bus. I was like, that's amazing. One of mine was on the bus. One of my first exposures was on the bus. Um, I remember just sitting there like, <laughs> just like swaying back and forth. Like, oh, I was like, no, I'm going to tolerate this. We're not just going to count down until the bus stops or until I can get off. I'm going to, I, I, will, I can live on this bus if I wanted to. Yeah. Mentally, this bus is now my home and I am never going to leave it. <laughs> oh, I, I, I love that so much because so many of the times oh, you can relate. I know you can relate to this. When you tell somebody, whether it's somebody on social media or maybe a client in your, in your therapy room, you know, look, you have to kind of accept that this, this is going to be the rest of your life, but you know, it's not, but you have to be accepting of the fact that this is going to be the rest of your life. I mean, I can tolerate it if it is for it not to be the rest of your life. So yeah, it's the I, paradox, it's the paradox yes, of recovery. <laughs> it, it is so paradoxical. And that's hard for people to hear when you say that sort of stuff. Like, but what if it never goes away? Well, you'll handle it if it never goes away. And when you can truly get to that point, then you have a much higher probability of it actually going away over time. But when you say in this bus, I'm going to make this bus my home, as opposed <laughs> to like setting the timer on my watch and just waiting. Okay, four more, four more stops, three more stops. No, no, I can be on this bus indefinitely if I needed to. Powerful message. Very powerful. Yeah, and, and it's important. I didn't enjoy the bus. No. It, it, the, the aim isn't to sit there and be happy and think about sunshine and rainbows. It was just be willing. And you're absolutely right. It's the willingness of it. It's like once I was willing to be anxious and I didn't care where it happened. Yeah. The paradox of recovery is then, then it goes away because you're literally teaching the threat response. You don't fear it anymore. So you, it has to be a belief and all a relapse means is you've temporarily lost the ability to tolerate your, not the ability, you've temporarily lost your confidence right. in your ability to tolerate your sensations. That's all a relapse means. So when people go, oh, it's back, which is another module, it's back. Uh, the anxiety is back. I thought I could say, like, no, the anxiety isn't back. What happened was that you've temporarily lost your confidence in your ability to tolerate it. And that's usually because you've got stress in your life. Usually you've probably moved house, broken up with your partner, uh there's there's a political election there's you've probably been a bit ill work uncertainty and then yeah that that confidence gets challenged but it's okay you can just be like i anticipated this and that's where i always encourage people to develop their metacognitive awareness for me even i do this now if i've got an interview coming up or whatever or some big things coming up some stressful stuff what i'll do is i'll say right I'm going to make a note of that because I'm going to get intrusive thoughts because mm -hmm. I, I, I struggle a lot with OCD. And all that. So I know all that stress will lead to potentially uh, disturbing intrusive thoughts. So I'll be like, no. And then when they do come in, I'm like, ah, ah. so you come, so you come in. Yeah. I was ready for you. <laughs> I think that's ready for you. <laughs> when our resiliency is a little bit low, because I, I love your stress drug analogy, right? So when that's kind of full, we just have no room to put things. I think we're more likely to fall into those bad habits. I like to think of the setback thing is number one, if you declare a setback, there's actually a bit of good news in there, believe it or not, because it means that you've been doing, in your estimation, better, which, okay, we might argue the mechanics of that, because I know you say all the time, like, well, not panicking, tell me something more interesting than that. Okay, I didn't panic today. Great, but you got to go and practice panicking. So I get that part. <laughs> but if you've been confined to your sofa, or you've been really restricted because of your panic and anxiety, and you are now out and engaging with the world on a more consistent basis, absolutely, that's better. And then when it sort of comes back, it's a reminder of like, oh, it's that's right, I have to do this thing again. So I think there's a there's a good indicator for somebody that says I've been doing so well, but now it's back. Well, that's good that you've been making progress. 
but such a good way to reframe you it. may have forgotten that like oh no no the progress came because you went through these nasty things or it's an, an adjustment that says well the progress was kind of more that you inched your way into life and engineered panic free exposures but even that realization is helpful right because then you can adjust and say oh well, no problem i have to adjust change course a little bit no problem there's always something to learn so I like that you address that too. You know, it's back. Yeah, oh, it's back. Yeah, and, and I know I, I've had that. I, I remember for years I wrote my I wrote my first book and for, and I I got into the state of oh yeah I know it I know the answers I know it. and something happened in life and it was really kind of stressful and the jug filled up and then yeah like woof it hit me it's relapsed it's back and then obviously it's anxiety it starts every thought with what if like. Right. What if, what if there's something you missed? What if you don't, what if you now don't know? What if you, this time it's anxiety plus more, which is one I hear. What if it's anxiety and something else? Right. Also, also just a quick note, like I've been traumatized a lot in my life, but I don't have PTSD. So I had lots of therapists and people saying, well, we need to get to the root of the trauma. And I'm like, and then I started going down this rumination hole, keeping me in the cycle there. And actually all I was doing was seeking empty reassurance that I wasn't broken. I wasn't broken. I was just anxious. I just relapsed again, but it was, it was, it was masked. And that's why the definition will always be I've temporarily lost my confidence in my ability to tolerate not only anxiety, but the uncertainty yeah. and recovery is that maintaining your confidence in the ability to lean into uncertainty. Which comes, I think, through just those are those repeated experiences and varied experiences. You know, the more varied your experiences, I, I like to use the word portable, durable and portable, portable. Yeah. So the more experience you have, the more durable your recovery comes and the more portable it becomes across multiple contexts. So you know, want a very wide and deep recovery is what you, happens with re repetition and dedication and repeated varied experiences. So it's a long road to home, man. Like even, you know, for a lot of us, it takes months and months or there may be elements of that that might take years because there are things you just don't have to do. The first yeah. time I had to fly after many years, I just had no reason to fly, was, was a part of my recovery, even though I would have told you I'd been recovered for five or six years by then. Oh, no, maybe not, you know, not fully. And I had to meet that challenge and go through some scary stuff. But, you know, it's all doable. It's all doable. And I love how you kind of broke it down. Like, let's get into the nitty gritty. This is about slogging through the mud a little bit and then celebrating when you get to wash yourself off but then you get back in the mud again and sooner or later you're not so muddy so yeah i like yeah. that good, yeah. good analogy you're good you're good with the analogies aren't you I'm the analogy guy analogy kingpin <laughs> that's what i'm gonna that's <laughs> new kingpin status because imagine you with your family not another analogy just tell me please please stop <laughs> oh god yeah <laughs> A little bit. They just don't pay attention at this point. I spend all this time in front of a camera, speaking all words, writing furiously, just pounding on keyboards. And then said, did you take out the garbage? Like, you know, you know, we're going on to, to, to school. Like, yeah, that's, there's no, there's no pay no mind to what dad's doing over there. So it's, just, it's okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I get that. Like with my friends and family, it's like, oh, your friends and family must be so lucky to have you. It's like, they wouldn't come to me if they're in peril. They can't stand me. <laughs> There is no shot. I can, I'm not helping any of y'all, but nobody's yeah. asking for it. So, <laughs> I get that. That's a good point, though. Like, uh, you know, and we could touch on that for 30 seconds or so. You couldn't anyway, even as, a, as a, an author, a recognized expert, somebody with a lot of social clout, you know, your credentials, your qualifications, you couldn't treat your family and friends anyway. So it's important to uh -huh. recognize where your help can come from. You can't. You couldn't treat your partner because you have a relationship with that person. Yeah, dual relationships don't work. Um not only in the therapy room, but in general, I mean, uh, friends that end up living together or working together or going to business together. It's a dual relationship. Mm -hmm. Things will break down. You've got to be really uh, quite um, careful about that. It's a bit, it's a, it's a bit different when you meet people professionally and the dynamic is built upon that professional relationship first yeah. but when you're two friends that know each other personally intimately on from different playing fields or whatever and then you try and form a new dynamic and stuff it, it's it's difficult i think um even so now i was thinking i had a friend who was <laughs> back to the topic of hair again he was a barber and it, and obviously i used to i used to go in and he used to give me like discounted haircuts and stuff and 
I don't, I wouldn't mind paying full price, but he was just felt so awkward like having to say, right, no, you have to pay full price now. And, and that awkwardness there of the dual relationship that existed just from giving me a, a 10 minute haircut, yeah. you know, because, of, because of what can happen. So can imagine trying to do that in therapy. No, just impossible. Really hard. And I think it, it's also why your partner, your family, your close, your best friend forever can't really be the person who shepherds you through your recovery. They could, Certainly be cheerleaders and be supportive. You need your family and social support, but those people can't be. And that's why let's bring it, let's bring it back around here. Cause we got to be doing that. That's why courses like Josh's or books like you and I have written and these podcasts and all that stuff. That's why they're important and therapy, professional, actual qualified help. So yeah, excellent. Yeah. I've, I've heard you've taken an interest in that. I've taken a minor interest in that. Yes. <laughs> so I'm excited. That's going to be fun. Um, I'd, I'd have loved, I'd have absolutely loved it if I walked in day one panic disorder i feel like i'm the realization dissociation i'm like i think i'm losing my mind my doctor's just told me looks more frightened than i do i'm constantly scanning obsessing how i feel can't eat can't sleep panicking wave after wave of panic and anxiety attacks can't go to work i walk in and my therapist would, is you too, <laughs> and you said well this is what's happening honestly it has saved me a load of a load of work <laughs> yeah he really would have right so i i get that well that's amazing oh, <laughs> at some point I, I will hopefully have the chance to do that so we will see um and then anyway, you start for, playing the guitar and it triggers everything again and like oh god yeah that's what i said there is no if you want to talk about trauma <laughs> listen to me play. There's not enough therapy in the world to get you past that anyway um it, i will make sure that all the links for the course and everything are, are on on my website for this which will be at the anxious truth.com slash 176 if you want all the links but how can people get get to the course and check you out uh, you can go to the, if you want a sneak peek, uh, this website is live, but I've not announced it yet. It's a uh, school of Uh, I'm trying to steal what James clear did with his habit school and completely plagiarize his idea. Um, oh. but legally so if you're listening, if you're listening, James clear, it's all legal. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, it's a school of anxiety, um, uh, com, And this is just everything on there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty excited for it and I really appreciate you having me on Drew. I think it's, it's a really good thing, a really kind thing for you to do. Anytime. Always, always happy to support. And it's a good thing and it's useful. So I will tell everybody, go check it out. I, I'm watching the course and it's, it's really good. It's just really good. It's very, very helpful. So I would take it, you know, if I needed it, I would certainly take it. So there you go. Oh, good. Anyway, my friend, thank you for coming on. I'm going to make you sit awkwardly through me recording the outro to the podcast, including the music uh but i thank you for coming on i appreciate it it's always can i make you laugh during the outro you could try i'm just going to cover my eyes so that i can't see <laughs> but anyway guys thanks for coming by you can go to the anxious truth.com slash 176 that will all josh's links for the course and everything he's making funny faces at me he's dancing <laughs> um is everything is right there and i will leave you as always with uh, asking a favor which is if you are listening on itunes or some platform that lets you rate or review the podcast then leave us five stars because damn it we're worth it aren't we josh five oh, yeah. absolutely five full stars oh uh, yes yeah totally. definitely i i gave you the podcast five stars before i met you excellent man that's what i appreciate <laughs> yeah so five stars if you can rate or review and then write a quick couple of sentences about why you dig the podcast because it helps other people find it and then we can help even more people which is great and i will leave you as always with afterglow by my buddy ben drake musician from the uk josh's neighborhood if you want to find ben you can find him at bendrakemusic.com so enjoy it thanks for coming by see you guys next week it's all around you, you can breathe it in This is where your story begins You got the feeling that you're gonna win